Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Giving Tuesday webinar for today. We're very glad that you could join us. And our topic today is getting your city involved in Giving Tuesday. We're being joined today by two very energetic uh, people, the brains and the uh, inspiration behind a campaign called Guelph Gives for Giving Tuesday. And Guelph Gives is a campaign that has been pulled together that unites uh, several partners in an effort to make Guelph the most giving city in Canada. So we're really excited to welcome today Brittany and Lindsay, who are going to be presenting uh, about Guelph Gives and how they get started and tips on how you can also get involved with your community. Welcome, Brittany. Welcome, Lindsay. Take it away. Thank you so much, Liz. Uh, well, welcome everyone. Um, like was said, uh, I'm Lindsay, and then you're going to hear a little bit uh, from Brittany later on. Uh, just thank you for joining us and for the opportunity to share with you as we talk about what we want to do in Guelph for Giving Tuesday and how we kind of want to make Guelph the most generous city in Canada, that we welcome competition if, uh, if there's anyone out there who wants to try to beat us at this. Um, just as we kind of move through our presentation, the first thing we're going to show is the most unfortunate picture that Brittany and I have ever taken of ourselves. Um, we won't make you guess which one's Brittany, which one's Lindsay. Brittany is on the left, and I, Lindsay, am on the right. And uh, we love this picture of the two of us, even though it is really unfortunate, because it shows our unselfie uh, kind of moment. So this is us working on our presentation uh, for our kickoff, which happened in June. But um, we love the unselfie because you know it's this viral idea that kind of got started on Giving Tuesday. But it takes something that was already happening, and it turns it into something viral. And uh, you know, like the selfie was help was already happening, and people kind of turned it into this great movement for Giving Tuesday. Well, uh, Giving Tuesday was already happening, and Wealth Gives is kind of going to springboard off of that. Uh, maybe, well, we're we're pretty determined, but put Guelph on the map as the most generous city in Canada. So. Uh, just as we kind of talk or talk today, we're going to go through uh, just our agenda quickly. So we want to talk about what we did last year in Guelph because uh, Guelph did actually participate in Giving Tuesday last year. Um, we want to talk about the Baltimore model, which we will explain more what that means as we go through. Uh, why we wanted to launch in Guelph and why we think Guelph and maybe any city could be great uh, to launch Giving Tuesday in. And um, how we have launched Guelph Gifts, which is just really the name of our local expression for Giving Tuesday. Um, we want to tell you what's next, so what we have on kind of our agenda coming up in the city as we kind of count down to Giving Tuesday. Brittany, how many days until Giving Tuesday? Oh, I can tell you, I think 76. 76. We do have a countdown, on our, a countdown going on our phone, so 76 days. Um, and then just kind of our tips for success or kind of what we have encountered as we've gone through this journey. And then there's going to be a time for questions at the end. So this is Brittany. I'm just going to talk a little bit about what we did at the University of Guelph last year. So last year, probably towards the end of October, my boss came to me and said, hey, have you heard of Giving Tuesday? And I hadn't at that point. So we kind of did a little bit of research and put our heads together and thought, how can the University of Guelph participate in Canada's first Giving Tuesday? So what we decided to do was we held a giving fair on campus at the University of Guelph in um, a pretty central area called the University Center. And we just invited, kind of on a one-off basis, a handful of different local nonprofits and small businesses to come and participate in the giving fair, set up a booth and promote their volunteer opportunities, raise awareness of their cause within the Guelph, within the Guelph community, collect small change and um, sell different memorabilia um, that their organization may have uh, had available. And it was just a nice way to bring together a number of different community causes to celebrate the day together, to celebrate the opening day of the giving season, to sort of be um, early adopters of the whole Giving Tuesday movement in Canada. And it was a really neat experience. Um, we actually recently won a silver medal at the Canadian Council for Advancement in Education Pre to Excellence Awards entry for the best community outreach initiative for our efforts last year. Um, and it was it was a really wonderful way to start. So we had organizations like the Humane Society, um, the Bracelet of Hope, which is an organization in Guelph, Women in Crisis. We also had a couple of different local businesses like Sweet Temptations Cupcakery that came and set up a booth and sold cupcakes to students and, and donated their proceeds uh, from their cupcakes that day to the Student Food Bank on campus. 
Um, we had another organization called Student Car Share that came and just gave pizza out to students who were studying for exams and promoted their car share opportunity for students. So it was really neat. We also ran, the University of Guelph ran a Mobile Giving Foundation of Canada text to give campaign. And we had a lot of social media buzz using the hashtag U of G gives and also the Giving Tuesday CA hashtag um, to communicate this message of our giving fair to the university and alumni communities. So these are just a few photos from the giving fair last year. And you can see one of the the Bracelet of Hope's booth on the left hand side there, just some foot traffic from above and one of the other businesses that participated. And um, it was a really great event in that it brought a lot of different local causes together and to our knowledge it was one of the only events in Canada last year that celebrated Giving Tuesday by bringing together a number of different organizations and there were about 16 different causes present at the fair. We had a great response from the university community and a ton of social media um, mentions, which was really great. We did have some challenges. We were pretty late getting to the game last year on the planning and the organization of it all. So um, the communication strategy and the social media strategy wasn't quite as fleshed out as, as what we've got in store for Guelph Gives this year. So we could have done a lot more in terms of promoting the awareness and raising awareness. Um, and also the venue being on campus on December 3rd last year was actually the first week of students' exams at the University of Guelph. So the campus traffic and the foot traffic that we normally see at that very central location on campus just really wasn't there last year and that was just with the timing of, of the year. So um, overall we thought that it strengthened and helped to strengthen the sense of community on campus and the philanthropic spirit. And it was a great fit for the University of Guelph with our, men, with our mission and reputation as one of the most caring uh, universities in the world, um, but certainly moving uh, just a bit more planning necessary to kind of expand it to the scale of, of what we're now looking at this year. So you can always read up a little bit more on exactly what we did last year at U of G. Um, there's a blog post up on the Giving Tuesday Canada website and the link is there. So what Lindsay and I have really been working towards this year and, and what we certainly found really interesting was what Baltimore did last year in the States. I'm sure some of you have probably heard of the Be More Gives More campaign that they launched in Baltimore last year. Um, they were lucky in that they had a sort of tech a software company behind their campaign. Um, but essentially what they did was brought together their entire community of Baltimore through the creation of an advisory panel of community leaders. And with all of their different networks and talents and um, planning, they were able to raise nearly $6 million in Baltimore for all of their local causes, um, which was just huge. And they really set the bar for Giving Tuesday as a community initiative. Um, I think kind of across the board, nobody did anything to the scale that Baltimore did last year. So I was kind of thinking earlier this year, wow, what Baltimore did was really cool. It would be really neat if we could do something like that in Guelph and, and really how challenging would that be? So the Baltimore, the team behind the Be More Gives More campaign have been amazing in sharing all of their um, insights and learnings with us, resources, and just helping to answer questions. And, and they really, they just want to see it take off, Giving Tuesday take off across the world. So they've been very, very helpful with um, teaching us really how we can launch something similar here in Guelph um, on a more guelph sized scale. So that's kind of been our model city. That's who we've been looking for um, as we've been working throughout this process. And, and what kind of what we want to take away is that they created momentum by working together and bringing diverse networks together. So by bringing kind of all of their businesses and talents and and unique skills and creative thinking and resources together, they were able to encourage an entire community to give back on one day and created this huge buzz and momentum around it, which we're like, okay, we're not as big as Baltimore, but we can definitely do that in Guelph. So, you know, we want to build momentum around this idea that this could be a big, important, great news opportunity for Guelph. We want to show Guelph how we can put them on the map by uh, kind of engaging them in this one amazing day of giving back. It's new to holiday season, so it's a great time to encourage people to give back because people are already kind of in that giving back spirit as we uh, approach Christmas and um, all the holidays around that. And then what we also want to do is set up a challenge to the city. So this is why we've kind of put it out there. We want wealth to be the most generous city in Canada. 
that's exactly what Baltimore wanted to do. They set up a challenge to their city to give people this urgency behind what they wanted to do. So we want to do the same thing, which is why we've kind of done the most generous city in Canada, because if we set this challenge for well, hopefully they'll get on board and that will help um, build momentum. And we kind of pitched it to them as this opportunity to kind of set a community building precedent for philanthropy in this city. So for us, being Guelphites, that's what people in Guelph call themselves, uh, we kind of had to ask ourselves, okay, what are we going to do to encourage Guelph? Why Guelph? Why is this, you know, Giving Tuesday perfect for this city? And the first reason is that Guelph cares. And this is just our experience in Guelph, uh, kind of living here and, and being Guelphites. But we have a huge volunteer, uh, a huge volunteerism in this, uh, in this city. Um, university of Guelph is called the most caring university often. Um, and if we look at in our community, so the examples of good working, the Oak Tree Project, Guelph Wellbeing Initiative, Downtown Gives Back, Random Act of Kindness, the Elevator Project, those words may not mean anything to you um, if you don't live in Guelph, but these are all things that exist in Guelph that are dedicated entirely to doing good work. Um, good working is actually where Brittany and I met. And it's a networking event for young professionals who just want to do great in their community. So we have all of these initiatives that already want to see this community uh, do amazing things and to help each other out. And so we know that Guelph is a community that obviously is really invested in this philanthropy. Um, and, and because we saw an opportunity here to be Canada's most generous city, you know, Baltimore kind of got that title and we want to have that title. That's something that, that gets us excited and we think it'll get other people in Guelph excited. And just as a city, we have kind of this uh, reputation of being innovators, of being leaders. Um, the Guelph Wellbeing Initiative, the Wellbeing Initiative itself is actually kind of taking off across Canada, and, and Guelph is actually a case study for many cities um, because they kind of have this reputation of, of kind of leading and being innovative in in their do-gooder work, uh, let's say. So, you know, we already have this great reputation, and, and the question that kind of came, you know, whenever you say, why do something, kind of my first thing is, well, why not? Why not try? <laughs> So, and we know that you obviously are all in very different cities, very different contexts. Um, some are bigger, some are smaller, um, but there's important things to ask about your city. You know, what is unique about your city? What can you leverage? We leverage the idea that Guelph is an incredibly caring place, but there's got to be um, something else that's unique about your city. Maybe you think it's a more caring city and you kind of want to go with that vein, or, or maybe there's something else that you can kind of leverage this off of. Um, you know, ask yourself, what change-making events are happening that you can pitch your idea at? Uh, the fall season is often a kickoff season. It's always very busy. There's lots of momentum around, you know, going back to school or university starting up or people preparing for the holidays. So what events are happening that you can kind of leverage off of? And where do local do-gooders gather? Most cities have some type of networking community. Um, you know, there's Rotary Clubs. There's other um, young professional networks. Young professional networks. There's other social clubs. That, that are kind of dedicated to doing good. And you know, ask yourself, okay, where do they gather and how do I get in there? Often emails, just sending out an introductory email and asking, saying, you know, I have this really great idea. It actually goes really far with service clubs that um, are really dedicated to doing good. Um, who are the key not-for-profit and corporate players in community? It will be so important to have their support and to get them on board so they can help build momentum. So you know, can you identify those people? Do you have those people in your community? Do you have their contact information? Can you reach out for them? Reach out to them. Sorry. And then the next thing to ask is, you know, what will work in your city? Yeah, and that kind of goes back to what makes your city unique. But how can you kind of propose this? How can you leverage this? How can you kind of get this going in your city? You know, what will work? What is scalable for your city? Uh, how much time do you have to invest in this? You know, think about those questions as you're preparing for why your city could also engage in this. Great. So we'll just kind of take you through a little bit um, in terms of how we really got started. So after reflecting on what we did at U of G last year and, and seeing what Baltimore did and just kind of getting really excited about the potential for Giving Tuesday in Canada um, as we enter the second year. Um, so this is Brittany talking. I sort of began going out and meeting with different community leaders in Guelph and just meeting with the executive director of the Guelph Community Foundation. Um, sending a message to the mayor and just telling her about this idea and saying, you know, what do you think and how do we go about getting started? Can you set us up with somebody from the city of Guelph? And just had some of these initial meetings and, and then sort of tried to get a feel for what the consensus was and how interested were people. Was it just me that thought this idea was really great or did other people um, want to get on board as well? 
And then I remember a couple weeks back when they were hosting a Giving Tuesday webinar, I think it was either Lisa or Heather Fields mentioned that it's really nice to have somebody else on board with you. And that's really what I was looking for um, quite desperately because it was beginning to be overwhelming. So when an opportunity came up to pitch the idea for Guelph Gives at a event in Guelph called Good Working, which was that um, sort of social good networking event for young professionals. I went and signed myself up for a one minute time slot to just lightning pitch the idea for Guelph Gives. So I did that. And then after that, Lindsay came up to me and said, well, that's such a great idea. I would love to be involved with It was with brilliant, you. and she did such a great pitch. Got to give props to Britt for that. And then I said, okay, you're committed now, so, <laughs> so here we go. Let's do this. Never looked back. I never looked back then. So found a partner in crime, or in, in good doing, rather, really, um, which was really key to moving this whole initiative forward. So after that, Lindsay and I um, began planning for our initial kickoff meeting at the University of Guelph, and we just sort of sent out um, this really formal-looking uh, e-invitation that made it look like we were something established already um, to all of our different community leaders like our community foundation, our downtown business association, different local nonprofits, and we'll touch on that in a little bit um, a bit more. Invited them to a kickoff meeting at the U of G where we talked about Giving Tuesday, talked about Baltimore, um, told them why we thought Guelph was the perfect city for this initiative and what our vision was and how we were going to get started, but really that we needed everybody's support in order to do so. Um, so really, we had everyone around the table put up their hands in support of the initiative if they if they believed in it and wanted to sit on the committee and move forward and were committed to the initiative. And everybody's hand around the table went up, and we have a great picture of that. <laughs> it was just a really good moment. So after that, we um, kind of started organizing a little bit more, and uh, since things have really taken off. But initially, you know, going out there and having the conversations in the community, the consensus was really great idea, sounds cool, but show us who else is involved first. So it was really important to get everybody together to say, listen, all of you are here because you've expressed some interest in, and you said you would be interested in Giving Tuesday if it happened. So here we are now, it's, it's happening, and will you be a part of it? So this is just a photo from our initial kickoff meeting at the university, and, and not everybody um, was there, but uh, it was a pretty good turnout for um, our, our initial meeting, which was pretty great, and some great suggestions came out of that meeting. Some people that weren't at the table for the first meeting um, were suggested by different members of the first meeting that we approach them and include them and loop them in on the whole movement, because we didn't necessarily know at first um, who all of the very important people were that needed to be on board. So that was an exciting day. And this is just a slide that shows you all of our different founding partners here in Guelph that sit on our steering committee and that have been involved since the very beginning and that regularly come to the different um, Guelph Give steering committee meetings. So for example, the Guelph Chamber of Commerce, the CAO and president of the Guelph Chamber of Commerce sits on our steering committee. And what's really been important for um, the role there on the Chamber's behalf is that the Chamber is connected to hundreds of local businesses and nonprofits, has relationships with all kinds of different organizations in the community. So the Guelph Chamber of Commerce has gone ahead and set Guelph, Guelph Gives up as a project through the Chamber, which has been great because now our sponsorship dollars can filter through there and some of that stuff is taken care of. Um, not to mention a ton of different connections have been provided and introductions have been made by our amazing Chamber of Commerce President Lloyd. We've also got the Volunteer Center of Guelph Wellington on our committee and they were really important because they've got um, connections with an email distribution list to hundreds of different local nonprofits in Guelph and the surrounding areas which we'll need to communicate to as we um, promote Giving Tuesday and, and encourage nonprofits in Guelph to get involved and plan for the day. The City of Guelph, um, a member from the Community Partnership Outreach Department, is on our steering committee, and they've been great. I mean, the folks in the city are very highly networked individuals. They have great connections that they can provide us with. Um, actually, it came from our city representative on our committee to pitch, pitch our idea to City Council at Guelph, which we did last Monday night, and got a really amazing response from the community and the council. They clapped for us, they which apparently us. never happened at <laughs> City Council. So. It was really exciting. Um, the Downtown Guelph Business Association is on our steering committee, and they're really key for engaging all of the downtown business and retailers in um, Guelph. Uh, we've got the Guelph Community Foundation and the Guelph, the Children's Foundation of Guelph and Wellington on our committee. Again, just 
just really great um, leaders and uh, executive directors in our community that are doing really great things. Um, community involvement, the potential to announce different grants on Giving Tuesday is something that we've talked about um, and some of those things. United Way is on our committee because um, they're a huge player, of course, in Guelph and, and many different communities, but um, one of the biggest questions we were having uh, initially when we were even having these conversations in the Guelph community is what about United Way? You know, our organization is a recipient of United Way dollars and how will that impact um, our ability to participate in Giving Tuesday? So we had to loop United Way in and we're happy that they're on board as well, which is just awesome. They're a huge funder of tons of different orgs in Guelph and they've been um, very helpful in helping to move this initiative forward in Guelph as well. And we had a number of different corporate partners on the committee. Some of our big employers in Guelph are Sleeman Brewery and um, Linamar, uh, as well as Royal Cannon, and they've been great to have around the table from that corporate perspective to talk about how they can, A, potentially sponsor and hopefully be one of Guelph Gives for sponsors around the table, but B, also to include their staff and their um, employee base in, in Giving Tuesday and potentially do like a staff volunteer initiative and spread the word on Giving Tuesday to their large um, networks of, of employees. And actually, Sleeman was our first sponsor who came forward, Yay. which was just awesome. And uh, it's been really great. Really, what we were looking for when we were recruiting people in the city, and this came out of a lot of initial conversations that we had with different community leaders. Somebody would say, oh, you've got to talk to this person. They'll be really great. They're awesome. They're a social do-gooder in this community. They're a leader. Um, and what we've started to realize as we've got these people around the table <laughs> is that they're very much the busiest people in this city that already have enough going on, um, but somehow they're making time for Guelph Gives and just hugely helping to move it forward. So if you want something done, ask a busy person. We've certainly learned that um, throughout this process so far. So think about in your community, you know, who are the noteworthy do-gooders? Are there top 40 under 40 lists or top 30 under 30 lists? Uh, you know, who are the people whose name keeps coming up when you go out and start having these conversations? Um, ask around, who are the rising stars? And you'll know once you start having these early conversations who those people are. And then it even gives you a nice talking point to approach the conversation with them because you can say, oh, I've heard so many great things about you. Please let me come tell you about my projects. And it works really well. So. So for us, um, we want to just kind of show you what we see as Guelph's Giving Day model. Uh, obviously, yours would not have to look the same as ours, but this is kind of what we have decided that we are doing uh, for Giving Tuesday and Guelph. So Guelph Gives is the umbrella campaign name. Uh, you can see our logo up in the uh, right-hand corner of the slide. So um, it's still part of Giving Tuesday, and we'll always be giving credit to Giving Tuesday since that's what we are very clearly part of. But we did want to have kind of that Guelph Gives name, almost like Be More had their campaign, just to give it something that's very local and something that local people can really, really engage in. So um, we are having two events at two locations. Uh, as of right now, there are two uh, giving fair and info display events. Uh, there's going to be games with them as well. And what they are, they're at the Quebec Street Mall and the Stone Road Mall in Guelph, which probably means nothing to anyone who's not from Guelph. But those are two areas that see a high volume of traffic. So um, we've picked uh, locations that are going to see tons of people. And uh, that way we can encourage people to kind of get on board. And because it is a very commercial season, I'm, I'm actually kind of concerned about the one at Stone Road Mall because I... I feel like uh, there's just going to be so many people there that we're not going to have time to talk to everyone. But um, we've decided to do kind of those two very localized um, events. Um, we have a huge uh, social media and digital strategy. We've already kind of, you know, we have the hashtag Guelph Gives. We have the at Guelph Gives handle. We have a Facebook page. We have a website um, that's already been designed for us. So we want to really springboard off this off of social media. Um, we have a huge community of networkers here who are really, really heavily engaged on social media, and that is such a great springboard. I mean, that's how you make something go viral. So um, we kind of have a strategy in place to see the social media campaign of Guelph Gives go viral, at least in Guelph. Hey, if we could do Canada-wide, that would be fantastic. But uh, we really want to see it go viral in our, in our community. Um, we've already engaged not-for-profits and foundations, and we're asking them to kick off their holiday campaign holiday campaigns and grant pro programs on the day of. Um, some communities, uh, foundations, and other foundations won't be able to do all of their grants, 
Um, they might have a granting cycle that happens, you know, four times a year or whatever. But there is a possibility that they could announce a grant or a family grant or a scholarship or something like that on the day of, which is a great way to kind of say, hey, for Giving Tuesday, Wealth Gives, you know, we're doing this. You know, our foundation is giving this money away. Uh, from a not-for-profit perspective, um, I work, I'm the development director for a not-for-profit, and what we're doing is that we have um, a Christmas hamper program where people adopt families for Christmas hampers, and we're kind of launching that campaign on that day. So people can give towards um, our, our, our Christmas hamper program as part of Giving Tuesday. I know the University of Guelph, they're doing kind of a $50,000 and 50 hours campaign because it's their 50th anniversary this year. So, you know, there again, they're springboarding, building momentum off of something that's already happening, but launching it on Giving Tuesday, which is just so amazing. And then um, we really started talking to um, businesses and retailers about the creative ways they can give back. And you would be amazed at the creativity that will come out of your local community. Um, we have some businesses, uh, some restaurants, I should say, uh, you know, they're already designing a three-course menu, and they're saying, you know, the proceeds of this giving day menu could go uh, to Guelph Gives um, Giving Tuesday uh, movement. You to know, a charity of their choice. Oh, yeah, so, and sorry, it will be given to a charity of their choice. Mm -hmm. Your other... Uh, the company gets to choose that. We have some, you know, companies who are talking about how they can get their employees uh, volunteering. You know, we've we've talked to a cupcakery who, you know, maybe they'll have a giving day cupcake. We're, um, you know, we're talking about community events on top of the businesses. You know, we're looking at having a skate. We have a um, the Guelph Storm is our hockey team, and uh, their uh, arena is right downtown. You know, they um, they did really well in the OHL last year. You know, can we have a skate there? Can we get the Guelph Storm players involved? Can we have a concert? We're asking all these kinds of questions about how to just create one day that is fun, it's community oriented, it's creative, it, um, you know, it takes things that are already happening locally and making them just these amazing ways to give back into this community. So mm -hmm. that's kind of what our giving day model is uh, starting to look like. So just uh, as we kind of talk about um, Guelph Gives, we want to show you what, how we launched Guelph Gives, basically, and uh, maybe as a model for what you could do on a smaller scale, on a larger scale, but this is what we did to launch Guelph Gives the campaign. So we've already talked about how we um, had a, an advisory panel that was um, comprised of local not for profit government, and business leaders, so that was kind of our first step. After that, we had some marketing, communications, and event planning. That way, um, People can really take ownership for what's happening. Oftentimes, if you just have one large committee, the co-chairs, which are Brittany and myself, still kind of get cut, or sorry, not cut, they still get kind of stuck in all the minutia. So they, you know, all the decisions are still run past them. They have to sit on everything. They still often have to do everything. By forming subcommittees, we've actually really freed that up. So we have committees who are dedicated um, to doing very specific functions for what our giving day is going to look like, and they're very responsible for it. They take ownership for it. It's a great way to get them further engaged in what we're doing, and it also allows the work to be delegated properly to make sure that it gets done well. We want to do everything really well, and so by putting people with expertise on these subcommittees, we're ensuring that people who have marketing experience are on the marketing committee because I don't think you'd want me on the marketing committee, but I know you'd want someone else on our advisory panel because they are so much better at that. We do have a logo. Um, that was done pro bono, so we thank that person. It's uh, It's been amazing what people have been willing to give to this project. We will say, if you, if you kind of frame it up nicely, people are very willing to kind of uh, help their community. So our logo was done pro bono. Like I said, it is uh, seen in the top right-hand corner of your screen. We have regular meetings. So uh, it's not one of those things that whenever we feel like we need to have a meeting, we get together. We have scheduled regular meetings. For us, what worked really, really well was saying, okay, every month, this is when we are going to meet. So we meet the last Wednesday of every month. Um, we are going to kind of increase our meetings a little bit as November comes around, but that worked really well for us. You know, just set a time well in advance. These people are very busy people, and that worked really well. And that was something that our governance committee had set up. Our governance subcommittee got together after our initial kickoff meeting, and they met, and they said, okay, what can we do as the government governance committee to contribute? So they set all our meetings. Um, they send out the invitations for the meetings. They send out the meeting minutes after the meetings, and um, they get all of the agenda items on there before we have our, our meetings, which is really great. Um, we also uh, engaged web design. That was really important for us early on. We obviously wanted to have a huge social media presence. 
So we um, asked a local company if they would be willing to uh, design a website for us. We were kind of, you know, we were being coy about it, you know, could you give it to us kind of, <laughs> kind of coyly, and they actually agreed. So our website was actually done by Giant Goat. Um, in Guelph, so props to Giant Goat yeah. for doing that. And we had, so we had Giant Goat come, they were one of the people that we had the initial conversation with, and they kind of said, okay, well, wait till we see who else is sort of really committed to this project, and then we invited them to our kickoff meeting, and then after that point was when they committed to, yes. to doing the website. So really important to show um, that you're really making some progress yeah. and people are involved. And the one thing we also want to do is to set a goal. So for Guelph, we kind of, you know, we talked about all the different ways we could express this goal, but it really boils down to us saying one city, one day, one million dollars. And that's kind of, um, I would say, our slogan, our slogan, you know, kind of what we're building off of. It's, it's what we say, you know, this is one city, one day, and we are going to do one million dollars worth of good work. It's going to be measured in a lot of ways. You know, we want to celebrate all forms of giving. We really think that's what Giving Tuesday is all about. But setting a goal was really important for us. And before we did set that goal, actually, we were going, when we were having our initial meetings with different people in the community, they were laughing at us when we were saying, like, I think we can raise $1 million, because if you take the population of Baltimore and the population of Guelph, the population of Guelph is about a sixth that of Baltimore, and if they raise $6 million, well, surely we can raise a $1 million, and to us it was kind of simple math, and people were laughing, but then once we actually threw it on the table, they were like, well, why not? Why don't we just go big and go bold? And it just looks so impressive on everything, you know? It looks like it looks like we have, well, we do have a plan, but <laughs> it, it gives something, you know, you always want to shoot big. You don't want to say, like, we're going to raise 10000 and then you raise fifteen, which is amazing. But it's better to say, you know what? We're going to shoot for the stars. We're going to raise a million dollars for this community. It really creates a sense of urgency for people to say, okay, how am I going to be part of this? How am I going to be part of that one million? And the, the logo and the tagline really, really helps to just sort of unify the whole movement moving forward and get everybody really excited. So what you're looking at right now is just a screenshot of the homepage of our Guelph Gives website. So again, thank you to Giant Goat for all of the work they've done on that. It, it, it looks amazing. So just to take you through really quickly um, kind of what we were thinking and the functionality of it, you obviously see, you know, it's very simple what that is. That is kind of the most famous street in Guelph. You know, that church is probably the most iconic building in Guelph. Everyone knows when you see it exactly what it is. It's in our skyline. So um, this is a very Guelph-oriented site. Everything about it looks very Guelph. You know, whatever you do, make it look like your city. Um, so above the top, we wanted to keep everything just really, uh, really easy, very simple tabs. You know, we have our home, we have our about that explains who we are, our sponsors, our founding partners. We have our join function, which is really simple. You know, um, on the join page, please go to our website, by the way, www.wealthgives.ca. Please go and check it out. Um, but if you want to join, there's some simple categories there. You can sign up as a partner. Um, on that website so that uh, traffic gets driven kind of your cause on the giving day. The, we're not as sophisticated as the Be More Gives More site. Well, no, we're not. In that we are not like an e-commerce built-in platform on the site. We're sort of this platform to direct everybody who goes to the Guelph Gives site on Giving Tuesday to the cause of their choice, but help them identify what that area of philanthropic interest might be based on a sort of categorical approach to segmenting the charities that are available. Yeah. So then we have our who's involved. Um, so sorry, the join is a sign up function. The who's involved is actually all the charities that are going to be part of this on the day of. Uh, there's a way for them to write a little blurb about themselves, for them to include their logo, they include their donate page. So that can all be put onto the website and then linked through to their own websites. We have a resources function. Um, it's a little empty right now. We're working on it. We have a sponsorship, have package, a sponsorship up there. package up there. And um, what we're going to be putting up there is, you know, um, a suggestion of tweets. We're going to be putting a webinar we're having for local not for profits up there. There's going to be our creative material is going to be available for download there. So um, as it comes in, we're going to be uh, constantly uploading to that so that people can take that content. It's going to be very basic content that is user friendly. It's easy to engage um, whatever you want to do for Giving Tuesday or Wealth Gives with that mm -hmm. content. So it's just downloadable. They can post it where they want to. And the only, only thing that's missing from it uh, right now is that we are going to be having a blog uh, added to that. Mm -hmm. Right now we have a news feed under the about. We want to include a blog because we would love people to share their personal giving stories or why their company's on board or you know why they decided to sponsor this event. We, one, that gives them a great showcase opportunity, and two, it helps people engage with this uh, culture of giving back, which is what we're trying to create on this day. So the blog hasn't been added yet. That will be going up, though. 
the other thing too is that you can always repurpose the Giving Tuesday Canada or any of the Giving Tuesday content. You'll notice on the main page of our website that we have a slider where we have a couple photos of Guelph, but then we've got the Giving Tuesday Canada banner there as well. And they've got some really great resources available on the resources section of their site that you can download and just use as well to help to promote not only your own organizational chapter, but the broader Giving Tuesday Canada movement. Okay, so um, now you've seen our website, that was kind of a sub-point. So what the other things we have done, we do have um, uh, collateral creation or content. So what that means is, you know, we have bookmarks, postcards, um, we're looking to put a banner across a very uh, famous bridge in our city. Um, we have that working right now. So we have had a young student from M&T Design who has done that, again, pro bono. We have to give a shout out to them for doing that. It looks amazing. Um, this is a, a great company that basically takes uh, co-op students and, and, and teaches them and then helps them create better work. And so they have, just, they have uh, agreed to kind of create our creative for that, which is amazing. We're so thankful for them. Mm -hmm. um, we have a social media and a communication strategy. Again, that's still in process. But what it's really designed to do is kind of create initial awareness for what we want to do with Wealth Gives. And as we move closer and closer and closer to Giving Tuesday Day, we're going to increase the communication. So we kind of have given little hints, little teasers about what's to come, and we're going to increase that to help build momentum as uh, we're getting ready for Giving Tuesday Day. We have a sponsorship kit uh, that is on our resources page if you'd like to see kind of just what we did. It's very, very simple, but we found it has been effective and it really clearly outlines what we want to do and I think that's the most important thing. Um, don't worry that everything has to look amazing or be really robust. It doesn't have to doesn't have to be. Simplicity can be incredibly beautiful and can get you what you want. So don't let that uh, overwhelm you. We do have a critical path that's really important. Um, it's always good to kind of have a plan of where you want to go. Uh, be More Gives More was great. They kind of gave us theirs and we modeled ours off of that. Uh, we have been to City Council, so the city knows um, what we're doing and they're all on board, which is great. You can view the video if you want to click through the slide presentation, which the slides will be available. Uh, we can get them sent out to everyone. Um, we're nine minutes into the presentation. The whole presentation is over three hours, so you might not want to watch the whole thing. And uh, we've already started to explore television and media connections. We have been in the Guelph Mercury, which is our local paper. Brittany and I are going to be on uh, TV on September 29th at our Inside Wealth segment that's done with Rogers Television. And uh, we do have another opportunity with the Guelph Mercury to do a guest spot. And these are just a few mentions that we've been fortunate enough to have um, from some people in our community. Henry Timms, who's obviously uh, kind of started the Giving Tuesday movement. Very, very, very <laughs> sweet of him to kind of give us a shout out. We really appreciate that. That's amazing. Um, Georgian Fundraising, uh, they promoted the webinar that we're doing today. And then Ann Paper, who is in our community. Uh, she read about us, I'm assuming, in the Mercury or heard about us at City Council. And she just thought it was really great. So she sent that out. So what's kind of coming down the pipeline, and it's important to note that all of the stuff that we talked about, while a lot of it's happening, a lot of it's still sort of up in the air for planning, and we haven't necessarily completely fleshed out our strategy. So we're still sitting here talking about what should we do on that day and, and working through some of our plans. So we're planning as of now to host an information session here in town for local nonprofits to come and learn a bit more about what is Wealth Gives and Giving Tuesday and how they can be a part of the day and help um, to participate and how they can do that. We've got a not-for-profit communication plan in place, so we're going to start reaching out to all, our, all of our different local organizations shortly with weekly um, content and tips on how they can participate. Um, we have a retail engagement strategy that we're just sort of starting to work on now. Um, we have sponsorship on an ongoing basis. We just confirmed our second sponsor, which is Scotiabank, last week, which is great. Um, so we're finally able to start getting going on some of the print materials and, and other um, pieces to the puzzle that we haven't been able to do yet without any funding. We're working on our material distribution, so sending out those postcards, raising awareness a little later on in October. Um, right now we're really, we really need to work on our local school engagement, so we're going to try and get some information presented to both of our local school boards here in, in the guelph Wellington area and have them distribute messaging for us um, to the local schools here in town and hopefully even drum up some friendly competition between high schools and, and elementary schools to see who can be the most generous school in, in the area. Um, so we're just continuing to work to build awareness within Guelph, within the broader um, province and really Canada as well. We're um, putting ourselves out there at every local opportunity that we have to talk up Guelph Gives. There's another working 
the event, coming up, the one that Lindsay and I met at um, back in May, uh, coming up next week that we'll be at just for a minute to just share the update with everybody, get the word out there. Um, we're trying to get in front of our Rotary Club. We're, we're going to be in front of our Rotary Club. Confirmed. 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 this morning. <laughs> awesome. Um, and just sort of go to all of these different events in our community where we can spread uh, the word on Giving Tuesday. And, and Giving Tuesday Canada has been really helpful in allowing us to share our message on their website as well. And um, supporting each other on social media to help to be a part of the broader Giving Tuesday Canada movement and really the global Giving Tuesday movement. So um, it's been pretty great. So as for some of our tips for success so far, based on what we've um, kind of accomplished and what we can share, um, it's really important obviously, and this is something that came from the Baltimore team as well, to have the right people on board. And you might not know who the right people are right away, but I promise as soon as you go out there and start having conversations with people in the community, you'll really quickly find out who those people are. Um, people will tell you, if you look at your top 40 under 40 list, um, check out all the resources that are available to you in your community to identify those do-gooders um, and then ask and you shall receive. I think this has been a key lesson. A key lesson so far. I mean, Lindsay and I are both fundraisers, so we're not really afraid to ask for things. But, you know, we haven't had to pay for anything yet that we've done for Guelph Gives, which is pretty cool. We've had everything contributed pro bono. You know, don't be afraid to approach a local web development agency and ask them to do a website for you if you're planning to launch something like this. It's a great exposure opportunity for them, um, especially if it takes off in the way that it's going to be in front of a national audience. You know, there's a really great two-way relationship there that can happen. So just don't be afraid to ask for help, for mentorship from anybody on your committee if you go so far as to organizing one like this. Um, be persistent. I think that's something that Lindsay and I have been applauded for so far <laughs> is that if you try and meet with somebody and they're not able to meet on the day that you ask them to talk about your idea for Giving Tuesday, just ask to meet another time, ask to have a call. You know, be as follow up emails are key. Follow up emails, <laughs> follow up calls. Just, just sort of be persistent. Don't let go of your vision here for um, this whole project and, and Giving Tuesday because it's such an important movement. And just think of the bigger picture and what you're working towards. So just stay motivated in whatever way you can. Get creative. You know, if something doesn't work out or if you can't get funding for something, don't worry. Just think about the other ways that you can try and go about um, getting everything done that you want. Delegate and allow people to have ownership. For some people that might be hard. I know I sometimes have a hard time delegating um, and tend to sort of just do things, but it's been really awesome so far to see our different subcommittees just sort of run with things. And, and Lindsay and I were both away at the same time in the summer on vacation and we came back and had like these really cool updates from our subcommittees and we were like, wow, you guys just went ahead and did that. That's so amazing. So, you know, just let people run with it and see what can come from it because that's how really cool things start. That's why we have the neat um, event at one of our malls here in town, the Stone Road Mall, and this kind of charity game that's going to happen because somebody on our event committee thought of it. So all of the great ideas come from when people sort of run with things, which is great. Thank your team regularly for their efforts, of course. Keep your team motivated by just keeping everyone in the loop and sharing all of the successes along the way, even if they just seem like little ones. Um, you know, it's really important to just keep everyone in the loop. Don't get overwhelmed, which can be hard to do, um, but just keep going. <laughs> if you can find a partner in crime like I found with Lindsay, it's, it's they can talk a lot you down. Yeah, Lindsay totally keeps me calm. <laughs> it's great. It's awesome. But most importantly, just have fun with it because it's so much fun once yeah. you get started and you see how on board everybody is, how much good everybody wants to do for the community. It's so motivating. You don't even need any additional motivation. Yeah. Um, so just really enjoy the ride of planning Giving Tuesday because um, you're going to be an innovator in, in social good and it's such an awesome movement to be a part of. So yes. don't take it too, too seriously, but um, you know, dream big and, and just go for it. So if anyone has any questions or comments, uh, you are free to kind of filter them through us now, through the site. I think there's a question and answer uh, section on um, the Google Chat that we're on right now. So I don't know if there's any questions. The slides will be available. So if, if you're kind of wondering how to get a uh, get a copy of those, those will be made available to people. But please don't be shy if you have anything. No question is stupid. We probably ask stupider questions to each other. So. <laughs> and to other people. And to other people. I'm going to jump in, you guys, um, because I have a question. This is Liz speaking from the Giving Tuesday team. So you mentioned about your, well, a lot of what you talked about today was the activities that you've been organizing to get geared up for 2014. Mm -hmm. um, you also mentioned that you had 
a really cool campaign um, on the on the Guelph campus in 2013. Mm -hmm. Just for people that might be interested, when did you start uh, your organizing for 2013? So, I mean, if somebody's watching today and they ha they want to get started now, um, you know, how does that work? If it's September, or is, does it feel like it's too late, or were you able to get something going? Yeah, that's a great question, and um, we didn't even know about it. I didn't even know about Giving Tuesday last September, and I don't think we found out until maybe mid to late October. And um, like I said, we just sort of threw a giving fair together in a sense. Like, we didn't communicate to all of the causes that existed in Guelph. We sort of just invited the top 20 or so that we thought were would be interested in coming and, and would be a good fit to come to the university community and promote their opportunities. So it was done pretty ad hoc, and we kind of just put together a couple of communication pieces to share with our alumni in our e-newsletter that goes out once a month and after the fact. And Mobile Giving Foundation piece we did, but we planned our giving fair at the U of G probably in six to eight weeks. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's an, obviously we've had since June to kind of think about this, and Brittany even longer than that. So um, this is a little bit more robust than what people might uh, want to tackle in September. But there's still something, um, you know, there's still a way to be involved uh, in whatever capacity that you could find that you could be creative. So, you know, we talked about having a skate. Maybe that's something that someone else could do in their community. You know, they say, okay, well, I can't do everything they're doing, but I can host a community event, or I can host a community state where people can donate to their favorite charity. I, I can maybe invite some local charities to set up booths at this state. You know, they're they're much more, I don't want to say manageable, because I think people, you know, always, always dream big, but um, there are lots of uh, sub-things that you can do in, in kind of a bigger strategy that may be uh, manageable, yeah, in you know, from a launching point in September. So that's great. Thank you very much. Um, we do have a question that's come in from Sharon, and the question is, how is financial transparency handled? I'm, I'd like to actually make a comment on that, and then I'd love to hear what you guys at Guelph Gives have to say. So from the perspective of Giving Tuesday, um, we do not accept donations on uh, to the Giving Tuesday campaign from the public. Giving Tuesday is, is a movement, so all donations go directly to the charity of choice. And this is an important distinction for us, or very, it's very important for us to be clear. So um, the financial transactions, financial transparency, it's really from the donor to the individual charities or nonprofits um, that, are, that are doing the fundraising. So, Sharon, I hope that answers your question. Um, but please, Guelph, um, go ahead and give us your perspective on that as well. Ours is actually the same thing. Um, so, Guelph Gives is not a fund that people can donate to. What it is, is is a springboard that people can launch their own campaigns off of. So, if you're going to give on Giving Tuesday, you would give to your own charity. If you're going to partake in some type of you know commercial enterprise, so say like you bought a cupcake or something like that, it is up to the cupcakery to donate to their favorite charity. Now, and now a service is still being rendered, so there is still a you know there's a transaction there, but um, they are uh, you know so say you know sweet temptations or something. If they come on board, they would still sign up as a partner with us as a retail partner, and then we would ask them to check in after to see what happened. But they would still be responsible for giving to the charity. Yeah, but we don't. We're not accepting. You know, wealth gives itself is not accepting donations. We are not a charity or a nonprofit. Although maybe next year we will. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? But um, so if from the Giving Tuesday website perspective, if anybody goes on that website, uh, givingtuesday.ca, what you'll see is that you can donate to any registered charity in Canada. So that's done through the Canada Helps Giving platform, online giving, and every registered charity is available to accept donations through that site. But it's not a donation to Giving Tuesday, it's a donation inspired by Giving Tuesday, let's say. Yeah, we're the same story. Excellent. So I want to say thank you so much to the two of you. Your energy is incredible. You make a great team. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing. It's really inspiring and I hope that people have had uh, a really good time hearing your story and hearing uh, your experiences, and we're going to look forward to seeing what you guys pull off on um, on Tuesday, December second, twenty fourteen. Yeah. 
I'm really, really excited about your one city, one day, one million. I think it's fantastic. So everybody, thank you for attending the webinar today. And as uh, Lindsay and Brittany have both mentioned, all of the slides plus the recorded session are going to be available. You can look in resources on givingtuesday.ca and we'll also be tweeting and, um, and posting um, links to that resource. So thanks again, girls. We really appreciate your time today and fantastic work. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thanks for joining, everybody. Bye.